Synology or Synolige, if you're French. I don't know if that's right. However, they sent me over a product here. I normally do my intros, like not necessarily in line, but this one, I don't have the product because it's already downstairs in my router slash modem room. So I can't bring it up here. I don't want to bring it up here because it's already ready to go. I've already been using it. What did they send me? They sent me a four bay hard drive NAS. That one there, not the five and not the two, the four one. They also sent me four drives to test out and they sent me an ethernet connector. Uh, and this video here is going to be a noob take review on Synology NAS. What, why do I think this is important? Well, there are tons of videos out there and there are tons of channels out there dedicated to NAS, network storage in general, uh, even direct attached storage in general. And they're gonna do a way better job of the hardcore, in-depth, technical stuff, troubleshooting, all that kind of stuff. And they're great channels and you can watch those. I'm not that guy. I'm the tech user level tech review guy. Um, I'm not a network storage professional. In fact, I've been avoiding it for a very long time out of absolute fear of it being complicated. And so this video is basically going to show you guys how easy it was for me to just plug and play this thing and then how incredibly useful this product is gonna be for me. It has apps that are on my phone, Android or Apple. You don't need them, but they're very useful. The desktop slash laptop app is fantastic. The whole thing is plug and play. Let's jump into it. Okay, so let's see what this little package got me set up with. We have the NAS itself, four bays, DS923 plus disk station. From what I've read, Synology drives are very well respected in terms of reliability. I mean, that's kind of the point, right? So they should have good performance and they should also have good reliability. So I've actually been putting this off for a little while because I've been swapping around computers, laptops, desktop. I finally have my final, my final form desktop set up and now I can have everything set up where I have all my data basically in a safe space so that I can work on my laptop and my desktop and have the same data. Basic lights on the front telling you if your disks are in there, what's in there and status of the thing. Uh, a USB-A for connection. On the back here, we do have two big fans to keep the things nice and cool. There's a lot of parts in here. Two LAN, LAN one and two. This is gonna be an expansion drive. I'll show that in a minute, another USB right there. And these are really easy to set up in terms of just every, well, to be honest, everything about them is easy to set up. When you actually are just taking out uh, you know, your hard drive, you just put them in and then pop it in and you're done. It's gonna be that easy. However, they did also send me to sample a 10 gigabit, where are you? 10 gigabit ethernet port, optional. You don't need this. These are still pretty quick down here. Uh, the included ones are still pretty quick. Right? But if you have a home network and you want speed, 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 especially if you're using huge data files or multiple users, that's going to be another case here. If you have multiple users, it's going to be fast. And as easy as done. Now I have a 10 gigabit Ethernet upgrade. We'll just plop the drives in here and we'll be basically cooking. I'll go hook it up to my network and I'll be ready to rumble. Mm -hmm. Here we go. That's one. Look at that. Now we're set up. All I need to do is go plug it in. But let's see what else we get. Uh, we do get some locking keys so you can't have your drives yoinked without yoinking the whole thing. So how easy is it to integrate into your existing network? Oh, I have my uh, modem, router. This is the cable that it came with. Uh, it probably would work, but I'm just going to use the one that Synology gave me just to be safe. Plug this in and we're going to plug it into the fast port. We could use these, but they gave me the upgrade. So we're going to plug it into the fast port. There we go. Now, what other work needs to be done? Well, I plug that in and then I plug this in. Yeah, I can hear hard drives running. That's it. Now we're going to go back upstairs and we're going to get started. That's how easy it is. You put the discs in. You plug it in and you press power. Okay, so now we have, uh, I just said, do you want to continue? So we'll go like that. I guess we can just leave it as the default name, account, I don't know, like that. Put my name in and then we'll make a password. Okay, so we'll come in here and I'll just set this up and come back. Shoop. Okay, so I just logged in, made an account, logged in. And it looks like there's a few other apps you can have here. This is just the mobile app. Of course, there's the computer, but this is the mobile app. 
Cloud services, monitoring, so you can monitor your NAS from your phone, which is probably useful for most people. Uh, photo, which you can upload to your photos. Drive, I guess just files. Oop, there, oop, there we go. And it's set up. So I suppose that's my IP, my offline IP, or maybe it's my real IP. Uh, yeah, so we have 10.45 terabytes for 8, 12, 16, but one of them is being used as a redundancy. So if my data implodes, it's fine. Yeah, so you drive one, two, three, four. Look at that. It's so freaking cool. So you can come in here, you can check your drive health, you can check your serial number of your drives apparently. Uh, how much is used, which is relatively nothing, probably just some shadow files to get it set up. Very nice. Let's go through the app together. We can do it on my computer later, but I'm like weirdly also super fascinated with the app side of it because I record on my phone. So isn't that just a cool thing? I could pull like videos off of the network, put them on the network. But if I can upload directly from my phone to the NAS, it's GG for me. Like I've just won. I put in a Synology photos address thingy and then my name and the password. Boom shakalaka. That's a reference to NBA Jam. Okay, so that's that. I not logged into my NAS using Quick Connect. I set it up. Okay, so we're gonna go like that. And I'm just gonna bring the camera away and grab a photo, I guess. Okay, so we're gonna grab that one there. This is a video, obviously, that I'm recording. All right, that's me. That's part of this video. So we're gonna go like that. We're gonna upload it. And now we're gonna wait. Okay, so look at that. Now we are uploaded. It's so freaking cool. Ooh, and it's quick. I mean, this is streaming off the NAS downstairs. This is the cable that it came with. Uh, it probably would work, but I'm just gonna use the one that Synology gave me. Just that's, that's, so for me, this is very useful. I might actually make some subsequent follow-up videos about this product after I use it for a bit as a creator. This is kind of a NAS for noobs setup because not everyone's a creator, but I think that alone makes this, super compelling because I can upload directly from my phone because it's my primary recording device, upload directly from my phone onto the NAS. I can pull it off when need be onto my laptop or my desktop. I don't need an intermediate device all the time. I don't need to worry about where it is, where the videos are. They're on the, they're on the network. Um, so this is it. This is, I just went find Synology.com, which is cool. Take a quick tour. I don't want to take a quick tour. What I want to do is do the tour myself. So this is the kind of hub with a cute little background there. Notification setup, it's fine, we don't need that. Don't need that. Administration account, I've already, I already did that. Health, and so here we go. So part of it you can do on your app, which is super useful. For me, being able to update, to upload directly from my phone is huge because I use my phone as my primary recording device. Some people maybe don't do that, but for me that is actually huge because uh, I'm a broke tuber, I guess. Um, so here's the device here, Synology Drive. What are you? Good at it. So you guys know that I already set up some of this stuff, right? On the phone, personal. Oh, that was in a, I did that wrong. I put it in a photos folder. Oh, photos app, photos app, photos app, photos app. Okay, that's cool. What is all this? Uh, download. We're gonna download it. Look at that, speed. That's fast, it's over a network, so I don't need to worry about the interwebs. Look at that. So, I'm a YouTuber, I also do other things. So I work in GIS, mapping, cartography, huge data, huge, huge, huge data. So I can now have data on my computer, this computer, I can easily put when I'm done downloading huge raster files, put them on my, net, my network. Then I can access them here when need be. I don't have to have giant amounts of storage in this laptop at all times. I can also access it on my desktop, which is over here in this messy area. Meaning I can streamline my workflow. I do not need to have direct attached storage. I, I can still do that and I will still do that. But a lot of stuff now, I'm just gonna throw up on my network, all my gigantic files. The other cool thing for me as a YouTuber, outside of that profession, uh, into my YouTube profession, I suppose, is uploading directly from my phone, personally, because I use my phone as my primary recording device. It will go into my network. I can pull it off there if need be, whenever needed. I can also just access it directly from any computer. 
This is huge for me because it saves me a lot of effort and time. And it's also a data redundancy. I have lost a lot of videos in the past year. So that it's gonna work as a archive, a backup slash archive. I can just leave stuff there. It's also going to work as an active drive for me. So I can upload directly from my phone, put them onto the network, onto the NAS, Synology storage drive. Then I will come into the storage uh, app here and I will just download them. So yeah, there's other things you can come in here. I mean, setting it up. I don't think that's the purpose of this video. I don't think the purpose of this video is to come in here and show off every single little feature uh, that Synology has. There are NAS channels. They're very good. I've watched them many times. I'm kind of a little bit overwhelmed by how easy this went. I was really mentally setting up mental barriers for this, where I was like, this thing is gonna be a massive pain in the ass and I don't want to do it because it's going to be a very complicated video. And I think the only thing that's now challenging is how to turn this into a coherent video because this thing was super easy to use. Honestly, super easy to use. It was, everything was plug and play. Plug in the drives, plug in the thing, plug in the thing, go onto my phone, hit initialize, hit some buttons, download the apps that I feel like downloading, come in here and hit, hit put in the IP address and use it. This is the bringing it all back together part, which I filmed right after the intro for what I do, which is being a YouTube person, YouTuber, I guess, whatever, YouTube person. And I also do nerd stuff, because I'm a nerd. And I also do spatial, uh, uh, spatial analyst work, meaning I have huge raster data sets and vector data sets, massive, massive data. Um, and they're always all over the place. And I, you have to use cloud storage, and my God, is cloud storage a pain in the ass. When you're working with giant video files, uh, or you're working with giant spatial GIS files, let's use GIS, uh, because we're talking multi, multi gigabyte data sets and I'm using 50 of them. So not only do I have to pay a fortune for freaking crowd storage, uh, but it's also incredibly slow to the point where I stopped doing it because it was just like ruining my life. Anyways, so if you do spatial analyst work, if you're a GIS specialist, uh, if you're a data analyst, data person, spatial analyst, whatever, if you're a scientist, you do like kind of my other job, uh, you should get this product. I'm dead serious. If you do GIS and you know who you are and you know how big the freaking data is, get it. Get this product. It's going to change my life, honestly, because I always have data in the cloud. And it's, I can't do it anymore. It's so freaking slow. Then you also get data corruption when you upload projects. ArcGIS, Arc uh, Map Project, you can get data corruption um, just based on the way cloud works, just so you know. Um, and I tell my students to not do that. And the other thing is you have huge amounts of data you're potentially moving between multiple computers, laptop, desktop, maybe you're sharing it with your peers, maybe you have a small lab. This is something you should get if you're like a data-driven scientist, data-driven professional. There's no question, just buy it, just do it. Uh, now if you're a YouTuber or someone in an adjacent field of YouTube where you have giant video files, maybe you're like a wedding photographer and you have giant video files, uh, probably even way bigger than what I deal with, you should get it. Why? First of all, it's super easy to use. This thing's gonna be a breeze to set up for you guys, honestly, and manage, it's gonna be a freaking breeze. Um, and I went in here kind of nervous, because I'm a nerd, like a tech nerd, uh, but I've never messed with this stuff. So even me, I was just like, uh, I don't know, this stuff's super technical. Like net, the word NAS was just like, and network attack storage, I was just like, I'm out, bro. Like I can't mess with this kind of stuff. It's too much, it's too much. Um, but in fact, it's not too much, it is very simple. I used to use cloud and my God, was that a massive pain in the ass to use cloud with, phone for YouTube? No, don't do it. Um, so that was a pain in the ass. Then I started using lots of direct attached storage, direct attached storage being like little NVMe enclosures, uh, which is fine, but then you lose your data. You don't, you can't remember which drive it's on. They're freaking expensive. These direct attached storage are freaking expensive. Unless you're editing off of them, they're freaking expensive. Uh, then you get data corruption, which happened to me this year. I had an NVMe die. So this is something you should get if you're a YouTuber or a content creator. You can have that peace of mind where you upload stuff onto the cloud. You don't have to upload stuff on the cloud. You upload stuff into your network. It's there. You can pull it off onto multiple devices to edit. And it's a game changer. So get it. Get this product. I'm serious. It'll change, your, it'll change the entire way that you approach YouTube.